Okay, this one says you're given something, and then they ask the question. They say the equation's in a particular form, and they want you to identify the A, the B, the C, the D, the E, and the F. So I'm gonna looking at it, the A would be the coefficient of the square term, which is clearly three. The coefficient on the xy term is actually minus two root threes. The coefficient on the y squared term is one. The coefficient on the x term is two. The coefficient on the y term, uh, make sure I'm doing that right, is two root three, got this over here. And then they say what the f is. Well, I don't see an f there. What does that mean? It's gotta be zero. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. I got that part done. And again, it's like the form of a conic section, right? We don't know what the conic section is at this point, but they start talking about the discriminant of this thing, and they give it to you. They say the discriminant is going to be b squared. Whoops, sorry about that. They're going to erase around. I'm, I'm done with a. A was pretty easy. I would say it's a gift problem. Now, b I might be a little more difficult, but b is uh, this letter b now. It's going to be b squared. Well, I'm going to do that. That's going to be minus 2 root 3 squared. I'm squaring the big B. And then it's going to be minus 4. What's the A going to be? The A is 3. And what's the C going to be? Well, looking at it, the C is 1. i got to do the arithmetic. You're going to get 4 times 3, which is 12. And then you're going to get minus 12. And what does that give you? That gives you 0. All right? They asked me to do that. I computed it. I got 0. All right? So he said, next thing I'm going to look at C, it says, you know, in general, if the discriminant is 0, the graph is a parabola. Negative, the graph is an ellipse. And then they go on to say B is 0, A, A equals C, blah, blah, blah. Positive graph hyperbola. Then it goes on to, what is the graph? Well, I just read it. It said it right over here. In general, the discriminant is 0. It's going to be a parabola. Got it. All right, we got the problem. This is good. All right, next up, they're asking me to solve it. Now, I don't know what they're asking me to solve. Oh, they're asking me to solve this. All right, it's getting tough. Let's write this down now. So a cotangent of twice theta. Let's write this down now. Well, the A is 3 minus the C. The C is 1 over the B, and the B is minus 2, root 3. Now, when they say solve it, they're solving for theta. But before I do that, I want to simplify this. This would be 2. That would be minus 2, root 3. So I'm going to say cotangent. Whoops. Let me get my ratio out. It doesn't look right. That the cotangent of 2 theta is equal to, well, that would be minus 1 over root 3, right? By the way, I don't like cotangent. I'm going to write it as tangent. And that means tangent of 2 theta is going to be minus root 3. It's a reciprocal. I want to just remind you that, you know, we want to think about this angle over here. And looking at the tangent curve, looks like this over here, I know the angle, which is 2 theta in this case over here, is going to be between minus 90 and 0 degrees. All right? Now, what, what gives you a reference of minus 3? That would be a minus 60 degree angle. But it keeps repeating itself. Right? The tangent keeps repeating itself every 180 degrees. By the way, there's a reason I'm speaking in degrees. K is an integer, by the way. I can divide through by 2. And what do you get? Theta is going to be minus 30 degrees plus 90 degrees K. Now, I want to go back and read it to you. They want the theta to be between those two numbers over there. So what does that mean? It's got to be between 0 and 90 degrees. And i got to pick a K now. So what K would I pick? K to be 1. And if I pick K to be 1, what would I get over there? By the way, maybe I should write this down as K. What is this going to be? If K is 1, it's 60 degrees. If you want to go back to radian measure, what would you get over there? Well, let's think about that. That would be um, pi over 3. All right, that's my angle. So what's the theta over here? This is the theta they're talking about. The theta they're talking about is pi over 3. 
All right. Let's look at the key and there's work over there and see if they got it written down. And they do. It's written right over here. They do mention it's 60 degrees or pi over 3. All right. This is good news. All right. So now I'm going to go to the next thing up. And I know it's difficult, but the next thing says use a computer software to graph it out. All right. I do want to emphasize that probably the easiest thing to do for computer software is to use a product called Wolfram Alpha. So just go to the web, Wolfram Alpha, A L P H A, dot com, and just type this in. And as you type it in, just say graph it, and it'll graph it out. It'll actually graph it out. All right, now granted, my pictures that I'm giving here over here, I'm using commercial software. But the bottom line is, you know what? If you have commercial software and want to do it without wisdom of alpha, you can do that. Someone says, what'd you put down over here? A couple of different things. Uh, one thing is I put down is the parabola that they want me to graph, which is a rotated parabola, by the way. And I put down the one that's not being rotated. This one over here. And then I rotated 60 degrees, all right? That's what we did over here, okay? So, um, but when I say 60 degrees, we're rotating in this direction over here, 60 degrees. And I did use commercial software to do that, but I, I had to know how to do it, all right? I'm not expecting you're able to do that using Wolfram Alpha, although you can, all right? So I want to go to the next one, and that's just using software. The next one says transform it. And this is the part where a lot of people start to get confused by it. It's not easy, by the way. I'll, I'll tell you that. So transforming it. And they're telling me how to transform it. All right? I got to make a substitution over here. And let me write this down for you. So the, the x is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be x prime, all right, I'll write that down for you, times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is a half, minus y prime, what's the sine of 60 degrees? Root 3 over 2. I want to just rewrite a little bit differently. I'm going to write as a common of 2, x prime minus root 3, y prime. I want to show you where this is written. And this is going to be x, and that's written right over here. All right? Now, granted, I wrote down root 3, y prime. They wrote down y prime root 3. Whatever works for you. All right? Same thing. All right, I got that part done. I'm going to get my eraser out. And I want to go to the next one. I just did that. Let's do the next one. Let's do y. What's y going to be equal to? It looks pretty simple. y will be equal to x prime times the sine of 60, which is root 3 over 2, minus y prime times the cosine of 60, which is a half. What do you get there? y equals common of 2. I'm going to say root 3 x prime minus y prime. I want to get my, you know, I want to see if it's written. And it is. Whoops, I made a mistake. I just noticed it. No reason to start again, by the way. I just noticed I copied wrong. So, I, you know, I did this. I did it over there. And we're getting what they said it is. All right, let me get my eraser out. And we'll talk about the next thing that you have to do. Which for, you know, I'm not going to say no one really enjoys doing that. But what I have to do now is i got to plug in. So it says, what are you plugging in? I want to put on a plug in. Wherever I see X, I'm going to plug this in. Wherever I see Y, I'm going to plug this in. And someone says, where are you going to plug it in? In the original equation. So that's all I did. You know, I put the 3 down, and then I put the x, and I squared it. I'll do that later. Then, you know, minus 2 root 3s, and then the x times the y. It looks bad. There's no doubt about it. And then what I do, the y squared. And what I do, twice the x. And what I do, 2 root 3s, the y. And here's the big problem, and I, I, I want to point out it's a big problem. Here's the deal, though. You need to simplify. Now, I realize it's frustrating, but you got to do a lot of things, right? You got to square things, you got to multiply things out, you got to collect like terms, and if you do that, you're going to get something remarkably simple. You're going to get this over here. I mean, it's going to be remarkable. Everything disappears except that those two things over there. So someone says, you know, what does this thing reduce to? A very obvious parabola. Let me go through that with you. What do you get? 4y prime squared would equal minus 
for x prime. Well, I'm going to divide both sides by minus 4, and you would get minus y prime squared would equal x. Now, what does that look like? It's a parabola. I know that. What kind of parabola? A parabola looks really simple. It looks like this over here. All right, that's the parabola, a really simple parabola. What are we doing, though? I don't really want to graph this over here. I want to graph this guy over here. So what do you have to do? You have to rotate this guy 60 degrees. You rotate him 60 degrees. But well, this is the reason for using software. I want to point out what I just plotted. I plotted this blue curve out. That was that x equals minus y squared. And then, you know, I plot the other guy out. It's, it's difficult, but the machine does pretty good. And what's this going to be? That graph rotated uh, counterclockwise, 60 degrees, and it will look like this over here, all right? And that's it. By the way, that line of symmetry is just a rotation of the uh, x-axis by 60 degrees. It's that simple. All right, let's see if we're done with that. I think we are. I mean, I need to do simplifications, but um, I do recommend that using technology can be helpful including as a computer algebra system to simplify that. You can do that. I have no objection to that. And if you do that, you should be getting this over here. It's handwork, though. Please make sure you can do the handwork, including if it frustrates you to get through it. Thank you.